Hi everyone, this is a walkthrough of problem one from Somerset 4. Um, whenever you're making classes, you need two different classes. One to define the type of object you're interested in making, so here Sphere with a capital S. But then you need another class um, for testing it, where you actually create instances of your Sphere class and run their methods to make sure they work. So I'm going to call that one Main. Um, you should, I want to try and illustrate some good practice here. Um, until you feel very comfortable with this, I think it's a good idea to view these side by side. So if you want to, you can right click on the tab and say split vertically. And now I have two editor panes and I can close this one. So one I've got sphere and one I've got main. Um, so let's go through this kind of step by step. So for my sphere objects, the first thing you have are the instance variables or the fields is another name for that. Um, you should get in the habit of making them private, and we'll talk more about that in a second. Um, but a thing that a sphere has, or the only important fact that we want to record about a sphere is the radius. So private double radius. Um, and then let's make a constructor. The constructor starts with public, and then it's got no return type, not even void. And then the name of the constructor matches the name of the class. And I'm going to take an input called r, and I'll set this.radius to be r. Um, the this keyword is actually only required if there's ambiguity between your parameter name and the field name of your object. So for example, if they were both radius, and I didn't have the keyword this, now we don't know which radius is supposed to save inside which other radius. Um, so the keyword this refers to the currently executing object, so whichever object is running this sphere code. Um, and so when I say this.radius, we're referring to the variable that's the uh, field of the current object. So we're referring to this one up here. Um, but it, like I said, it, you only need that if there's a name ambiguity. If we have r here, and this is r, then you wouldn't actually need to have the keyword this. Okay, this is enough that we can actually start creating sphere objects. So over here in main, I'll do psvm tab to create my main method. And then I can say sphere s equals new sphere. Um, the keyword new is what actually runs the sphere constructor. And then this is the name of my constructor. And over here we see it takes one input, the radius. So let's create a sphere with a radius of 3.3. .3. Um, you see here inside IntelliJ, it's actually displayed the name of the parameter r here to remind you what this number is about, which is a really nice feature of IntelliJ. All right, um, let's do something that we wish would work but doesn't. Um, System.out.println s. So it would be nice if this printed information about the sphere. If I go ahead and run the program, you'll see what actually happens is it prints this thing which says sphere at sign and then all this. Um, this is a memory reference to where your sphere object actually got created in memory. That's not very helpful. So you can do, uh, you can fix this problem by creating a method called toString that looks like this in the sphere class. So it returns a string, it's called toString with a lowercase t and an uppercase s. This is a special built-in method and whatever we return, so for example if I return high, now if I run the code over here, any sphere object that's inside, or any, uh, any variable that contains a sphere object that's inside a print statement will display whatever the toString method returns. So here I said high, and you see that it displayed down here as high. Well, that's not very helpful. What we actually want is to display the radius. So I'm going to say radius, and then radius here. And now when I run it, you can see that my sphere displays itself using some helpful information. Let's create another sphere for testing purposes. So this is sphere 2, and this sphere I'll create with a radius of 5, and then s out sphere 2. So now I've created two spheres and I'm printing, oops, and I'm printing two spheres. And as you can see, they print with their two radii respectively. Okay, let's rapidly make the rest of the methods. So um, a getter method, uh, its purpose is to let another class access this variable. So uh, I'll call it getRadius, and it doesn't take any inputs, and it just returns this.radius. 
A setter method is the opposite. A setter method will let another class set the value of this variable. So public void set radius. I need an input for whatever the new radius is. And I'll say this dot radius equals new radius. <coughs> I've got a volume method. So that should return a double. It's called, oh, is it just called volume? Okay. I don't need to take a radius as input because the sphere object knows its own radius. So I'll be using that radius variable up there. So let's return, let me do something a little bit wrong first and then we'll talk about why it's wrong. So 4 thirds times pi times this dot radius cubed. Okay, so um, there's several things wrong with this. First, this is not uh, the way that you can actually cube a number in Java. Um, if I wanted to, I could cube it by saying math.pow radius comma 3, and that's the same thing as saying radius to the power of 3. That runs quite slowly, actually. So I think what's, in, what's a little bit better is just to say radius times radius times radius. Um, there's another problem. 4 thirds, remember, um, because 4 and 3 are both integers, this will perform integer division. And so this will be equal to the number one, like the integer number one, um, which is not very helpful. So you can fix that problem by making one of them be 4.0. So now they're not both ints, and now we'll return the right thing. All right, so I'm returning the volume. What else did we have? So last one was the is larger than. So Boolean is larger than. So this is interesting because you take another sphere's input I'll name it other. And the idea is there's going to be some sphere object that's running this method. So I might say in my tester over here, for example, uh, s, so um, I might say if s dot is larger than s2. So in this case, uh, my sphere inside the s variable is the one running the is larger than method, and the other sphere inside s2 is the input. So the sphere inside S2 is what gets passed into this other input variable. Okay, so what's an easy thing I could do? I could say uh, if, so I could look at my radius. So I could say if my radius is bigger than other.getRadius, then return true. Because I'm saying if my radius is larger than the other one's radius, then that must mean that I'm larger than they are. So otherwise I could return false. Um, generally speaking, instead of uh, accessing your own variable this way, you can run your own getter method. So get radius, or if you prefer this dot get radius. So now this, this reads very nicely, get my own radius. If it's larger than the other's radius, return true because I'm bigger. Um, doesn't have to be uh, radius, it could be volume. So if this dot volume is greater than other dot volume, return true. Um, there's another trick here, which is um, if this if statement is returning true, then I run this command, which returns true. If this if statement is returning false, then I go here and return false. So in other words, I want my method to return the result of whatever this evaluates to be. So instead of having this sort of if and, and other return statement down here, I could think about it this way. I could save... I could say answer equals, and then I'll evaluate this dot volume bigger than other dot volume. So now this is gonna be true or false, and I store that true false value inside answer, and then I could just return answer. Um, and now that you think about it that way, there's actually no purpose in saving whatever this evaluates into a variable if the only point is to return it. So instead, I could literally just return whatever it is that that evaluates to. And so now that's uh, sort of a much shorter, and we don't need these parentheses. So now that's a much shorter and cleaner version of, uh, of an if statement that just returns its own evaluation. On the testing side, if I wanted to be sure that these methods worked, um, I would do something like this. I'd create a couple of different spheres. I would display the two spheres. I might run some of the methods. So volume one is s dot volume and volume two is uh, 
s2.volume. And then I would say like s.setRadius to something new, and s2, to, well, I guess I don't have to set s2. And so then I'd run these same things. So I'd display s and see when I set the radius to 10, did everything else change? And then what uh, new vol is going to be <coughs> s.volume. And then I do this. Um, so boolean answer equals s dot larger than s2, and then s out s larger, and then answer. So this can look like whatever you want it to look like. My only point is you want to write some code that will run each of your methods in a way that lets you actually look at the values and the variables and see how they're changing so that you can see if your methods did what they were supposed to do. So here I'm seeing uh, radius is three and radius is four, which matches how I created them. And then it's printing two volumes and you could double check by hands to make sure that those are the correct values. And now radius 10, so that's uh, from this print statement after I set the radius to 10, so I can tell that works. And now the new volume is much larger. And then is S larger, it says true, which is right because um, S got set to a radius of 10 and S2 still has a radius of whatever, four. Um, so it's not a perfect check, it's sort of a sanity check to make sure there's nothing grossly obviously wrong. Um, you wouldn't want to send this code straight to production because there could be lurking situations where some sets of values don't work or some methods won't work if you run them in the wrong ordering. Um, but it's a good first pass. Okay, I hope this was helpful. Good luck on the rest of the set.